Okay, so if you have used Scrivener before, you're probably familiar with the concept of project templates, the, those templates that appear here at the very beginning of every Scrivener project. That's how your, pro your project begins, typically in this new project window here. And so today we're going to talk about how we can not only take advantage of Scrivener's built-in templates, but also how to take advantage of custom templates that we make ourselves. Let's begin. So the first thing we're going to do, go ahead and do is open up Scrivener. And as you can see, as we jump in here, we're, we're in the Get It Started section here. But if we come down here to our Fiction section, you can see already that I have some custom templates in addition to the stock templates that are included with Scrivener, such as the novel and the novel with parts and this short story option here. I have my epic fantasy template. That's a template that I have created myself uh, painstakingly over the years, and it has been a wonderful resource for me. And I also have here the NaNoWriMo template, which is available every time I do Camp NaNoWriMo and also in November during uh, NaNoWriMo. Okay, so what we're going to go ahead and do is, uh, as an example for getting started, we're going to go ahead and create a new novel here. Okay, create that. And we're going to uh, choose a place to save. It really doesn't matter where you save it, and it really doesn't matter what name you give it at this point. We're just going to call this uh, my first novel. Okay, you can see I'm saving mine currently inside of Dropbox Apps Scrivener. That's the folder directory. Um, so I am saving mine to the cloud, but you can easily save those on your computer. And as long as you keep them in the place you can find them, uh, typically I recommend in a folder titled Scrivener Projects, right? Really easy to find. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll click Save. It's going to load that up here. There we go. Make that big so we can see it a little bit better. And maybe we'll come over here too and just zoom in a little bit too so that's a little bit more clear. There we go. I'm using the editor zoom there to do that. Perfect. Now, the novel template is great, but I like to make it my own. So I'm going to go ahead and change it around and make this template more usable for me. And hopefully, this will also give you an idea of kind of what's to come for you as you create your own Scrivener templates and also use the existing ones that are available in Scrivener. So let's go ahead and come in here. You can see here that we have our chapter right here, right? We have a, a, this novel format. Um, usually this novel format section here, I read through it one time and then I don't read it again. And if I ever did need to read it again, I could easily find it, okay? Easily, easily find it just by going to File, New Project, Fiction, and recreating this same novel template really easily just by coming back here and recreating it. And get, I could get that information all back. But since I don't need it, and I can easily retrieve it. I'm going to go ahead and click it, and I'm going to drag and drop that into my trash. Okay, so I don't need that part. Um, likewise, my characters, places, even the front matter here, um, I do want all that, but I don't like it outside of my research folder, so I'm going to go ahead and drop it in. I like a really clean interface. I want it to be really usable, really clean, just something that when I look at it, it doesn't give me anxiety. It gives me clarity. So let's go ahead and drag and drop those into our research folder, front matter two, and our notes. Now you can arrange, I can arrange this in any order I want to. This sample output here, I don't need it. It's just uh, examples of what my manuscript might look like here, right? When I'm done and I'm, I'm exporting it out of Scrivener, okay? These are just examples. Once again, I can get them by going to the file new project, right? And creating that novel template again if I wanted to get access to that content again. So we're gonna go ahead and right click, move to trash there. And then we're gonna close that up. Okay, it looks good, looks good, looks good, looks good. Okay, then we have our template sheets. Yeah, I think we'll go ahead and keep the template sheets out. And if we minimize everything, you can see now we have one, two, three, four folders, um, which I really like. That's really clean, really nice. And I can easily open the, any one of these folders up and collapse it and find what I need to find. Uh, the research folder in particular, that can get a little bloated um, because you're adding a lot of different folders, a lot of different things, but still, I like to be able to close all that my research up so it's just out of the way when I don't need it, right? Okay, so it all looks good. I have my template sheets here. This is what I want my novel template temporarily, right, for, for starters, to look like every time I own it. This is Oliver's preference, okay? This is how I do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and go as, 
go to go into file save as template and this is how we actually click create our template now it's going to give you this little warning here it says this project seems to contain personal information are you sure you want to save it as a template and uh, so it does have like other informations in there like you know it could have personal information such as your name address telephone number etc um so be aware of that so if you're planning on sharing this inf the information, if you have any of that stuff in there, make sure you go through and delete it. I don't think there should be anything in here because this is a brand new project. shouldn't have any of my information attached to it, right? But you can just follow the instructions right here. It says you can replace elements such as name and address with tags, which get replaced with information from the user's author's name when a new project is created from the template. See the tags list in the help menu for more information. And of course, if this template is just for personal use only, you can safely ignore this warning. You can even turn the message off, although I don't recommend that. I, I think it's best just to keep it on as a reminder every time you do this. Um, that, hey, make sure if you're going to share it with someone, that personal information is removed. So we'll go ahead and click OK. It's going to take us to this new project template window here, and we can then give it a title. I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it Oliver's Novel Template. Okay. And it is a novel, so it is still in the fiction category, but you can see I can select any category I want. I can even create my own, which is kind of cool. Um, something for another day. But you can easily come in here and just type in my custom category name. But for now, we're going to go ahead and keep it as fiction. And then we're going to come in here and we can choose the icon. Now you can create your own custom icon from that. It's a little bit tricky. So I'm gonna table that for another video, but rest assured we will come to that and we'll look at that and how to uh, create our own icon or save our own icon here um, for our, our templates if we want to. Okay, so for now we're just gonna go ahead and use the manuscript. Let's do the short story pen, just so we can easily tell that apart, right? So we've got that selected there. Um, we could save styles to the template. We don't have any styles really other than the just what's already the default. So we're just going to leave those alone. And then we're going to click OK. And you'll notice here it also says templates are saved in the Scrivener's application support folder. So if you're actually looking for where the template is, that's where it's, it's located. But just so you know, you can also come to File, New Project, and export the template here too. Okay, from the options. So you can see this grayed out because we don't have a template selected. But if we did, it would work. Let's see if our template came through. So we go to file, or rather to fiction here. There it is, Oliver's novel template. And if I open it up, we'll go to, we'll just call it uh, Oliver's novel template. And I may have to give it a new name because I did this video once already on Mac. So I'm going to give it, add a one to it. Click save. Okay. Okay, there we go. So it created, and we can see, oh, what happened? It saved us um, in the trash, right? It looks like we were in the trash. <laughs> okay, you can see that right there. We have our standard manuscript here, paper novel from the original, my first novel here. And this is the Oliver's novel template, one that we created from this template, right? And we have here our trash here. Oops, uh, so that's we don't want that, right? So we can easily fix that. Now, since I named it this nice name, actually, that's the one I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna close out this guy here. We're going to open up this, and this is going to be our new actual template that we're going to use. You could use the old one, it doesn't matter. Um, and then we're going to go here and we're going to make some changes. So we're going to actually delete this, empty the trash, delete it. Okay, so the trash is gone. And we also want to make sure that we're starting in our scene, right? Like this, ready to type. And we might even add in something here so we can sell. Start writing novel here, right? Okay, so we can know. We know what we're doing, right? So there we go. We'll go once again to File, Save as Template. We'll ignore this warning because we're already already aware of the information there. We will have the same name, everything, okay? Click OK, and it's going to ask you, hey, this template already exists. Are you sure you want to override this? And you're going to say, yes, I do, because I'm updating it. And that's the key thing here. Uh, if you want to, you can not override it, right? And you could give it a new name and add a new template in there. And there'd be two different templates. But this is the easiest and quickest way to go ahead and update uh, your template. In fact, this is how I do it. I usually leave, have a Scrivener project named the template name, right? You can see this one's called Oliver's Novel Template 1. I might even change that to Oliver's Novel Template for Windows, right? Or something, okay? And then anytime I want to make a change to this template, I come into this project, I make the change, and then I go ahead and override it like this. Let's go ahead and click Yes. Okay. That change has been made. So if I close out this project here, okay, it opens up our new project window. Let's go back to fiction. Let's open that up. Let's give it a new name. We'll call this Windows Novel Novel Test. Okay, click save. 
and boom there we are and it opened up exactly where we wanted it right where it says start writing novel here um everything is looking good all our research is where it's supposed to be you know looks great okay so we'll go ahead and close that out okay so that's how you create a project a scripture project template and that's how you update it i hope you enjoyed this video today you learned two things one how to create a Scrivener project template and how to update it. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Love to hear from you. Love to get those questions answered. And if you're enjoying these videos, give me a like, subscribe, so that you can become the writer that you want to be. See you next time.